When it comes to eating fresh fruits on their own, for some reason, I tend to go for all the rest except apples. But I do love to use them in baked recipes. I'm using a Canadian grown Cortland apple as this variety is abundant at the moment and its custody texture when baked works well in this recipe. I remember the first time I made a vegan cake for my mom, she was very impressed and immediately asked for the recipe. Even though not vegan herself, my mom now always makes all her cakes vegan. And ever since I shared my very first vegan cake recipe with her, she has started experimenting on her own and now shares her recipes with me. So inspired from one of my mom's recipes, this loaf cake calls for simple ingredients that most well-stocked pantry probably already carry. Start by preheating the oven at 200 degrees Celsius or 400 degrees Fahrenheit. For this loaf cake, after peeling the apple, I'm slicing half of it and chopping the other half into smaller pieces. The sliced pieces are for the top and the smaller pieces will go in the batter. The cake uses the simple dry and wet mix method. So in a large mixing bowl, sift the dry ingredients together. The flour, baking powder, salt and soft brown sugar. I like to sift the ingredients as this makes the cake more airy and ensures that no lumps are left behind. Once sifted, add in the fine desiccated coconut flakes and mix well. Then zest the orange directly in the mixing bowl. I have used the zest of a whole orange, but if you want a more subtle flavor, you can use just half of the zest. Try to only catch the orange layer, as the white part is bitter. Now in a measuring jug, extract the juice from the orange. I obtain half cup plus one tablespoon or 140 ml of juice from that orange. If you don't get as much, you can make up the rest of the amount with some non-dairy milk. Next add the non-dairy milk. I'm using store-bought oat milk. You can also use homemade oat milk that is not too thick or other non-dairy milk like coconut, almond or soy milk. Then add the vanilla extract and the oil and mix all the liquids together. Next, make a well in the center of the flour mixture and pour in the wet ingredients. Gently mix the wet and the dry ingredients until the flour is moistened. Then add the chopped apples followed by the raisins. Continue to fold and mix until everything is well combined. You will notice that the batter is not a runny one. Don't be tempted to add more liquid as the moisture from the apples will provide enough while baking. Pour the batter into a loaf pan lined with parchment paper. Spread it evenly into the pan. This batter bakes well in a smaller loaf pan 20 by 10 cm or 8 by 4 inches rather than a larger one. Place the apple slices on top by gently pushing them in to line them in a row. Sprinkle with some sugar and cinnamon. The baking time will depend on your oven. In my oven, it requires a total of 35 minutes. For best results, bake for 20 minutes at 200 degrees Celsius or 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Then lower the temperature to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit and continue to bake for another 15 minutes. 
remove from the oven and test with a toothpick or bamboo skewer. If it comes out clean, the cake is done. Due to the apples in the cake, the skewer may not be super clean and may have some lightly moist cake crumbs or bits on it. Allow the cake to completely cool in the pan before removing and cutting it. This loaf cake keeps well for a couple of days in an airtight container and is even nicer the next day. If you want to keep it for longer, especially if it is warm where you live, I do suggest keeping it in the refrigerator because the fresh fruits might cause it to go moldy. This simple loaf certainly offers a whole lot more than what you actually put in. It's a moist loaf and yet it's not dense. So enjoy and I'll see you soon for another recipe.